Hello, my name is Jean-Sonic Casimir. I'm one of the co-chairs of the French Heritage Society Young Patron Circle. I am delighted to introduce the second installment of this Innovation in Action, where we are featuring dynamic chateau owners in France. The chateau owners are creating multimedia content through YouTube, Instagram, and crowdfunding platforms to raise their awareness and support for their restoration work. Their stories have captured the imagination, provided inspiration, and much needed escapism to a lot of people around the world and over the past year. Today, we will hear from Erin Shoa and Jean-Baptiste Bois. Erin and Jean-Baptiste purchased Le Château de Bourneau only a few years ago and have been lovingly restoring its period detail through hard work and resourcefulness. Erin has been documenting the daily challenges and joy of Chateau Life on her very popular Instagram account, the Intrepid Chatelaine. Now I will hand it over to Jennifer Erlen, our Executive Director at French Heritage Society. Thank you, Johnson. On behalf of all of us at French Heritage Society, I say a bonjour to our members who are with us today and a warm bienvenue to those of you who are new to our programming. For those who may not be familiar, French Heritage Society's mission over the past 39 years has been awarding preservation grants to culturally and historically significant French architecture in France and in the United States. And equally in part of our mission is ensuring that the skills to, to preserve these places are transferred to the next generation. And through our advanced internship program every year, we select and send 35 students from universities in France and the United States across the Atlantic for internships. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the French Heritage Society team for their work on this program. Natalie May thoughtfully curated the series and Ben Wells is making sure that we have a smooth experience together. Please note that at the end of the program, we will welcome you all to join us on screen and you're welcome to ask questions directly to Aaron and Jean-Baptiste at that time, or throughout the program, you can put them in the chat function, which is at the bottom of your screen, and then I'll ask them at the end of the program. I thank Aaron and Jean-Baptiste for being here with us today. And before we start our conversation to set the tone, we thought that seeing a video might help transport us to the beautiful Chateau de Bourneau. We're just waiting for Aaron and Jean-Baptiste to join us. But what a gorgeous, gorgeous introduction to Chateau de Bourneau. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us. Thank you so much for inviting us. We are really, really privileged and delighted to be out. So thank you for letting us join you. Why don't we start off by you telling us how, how did you find Chateau de Bourneau and how did you end up in La Vendée region of France? Well, so, um, it's actually a bit of a long story. Um, both Jean-Baptiste and I, we are absolute dreamers in a lot of ways, and we love French history and heritage. Um, protecting a historical monument has always been something that the two of us had wanted to do together. And we imagined this would be something we probably did in later life because you know, we both had very, I say, normal careers. I, I'm a, a hospital doctor and- uh, I'm a mechanical, in a, a mechanical engineer. 
So we sort of thought we would do our normal career route and then maybe later on in life we would have the opportunity to look after and protect a historical monument. But it actually came a little bit sooner than um, we expected because we just had this moment when Jean-Baptiste was only supposed to be in the UK where we met for one year on an Erasmus exchange scheme to learn English and one year became nine years. <laughs> following my career around and his plan was always to go back to France um, so we had this moment where there was a perfect career break for me and we just thought well perhaps now is the opportunity we could actually you know do this dream and um, find this old property that's been waiting for a guardian for this generation so that's sort of how it happened and we had a look um, actually across all of France really. We weren't specifically thinking of Vendée. Um, it's not a region I knew at all. You knew. I knew it because I, my family had a holiday home in Vendée, but not exactly where we are uh, further down the coast. So, so yeah. It was, yeah, it was a new, a sort of a new region for us, but um, we had a look at a lot of chateaux and some very beautiful old buildings as well. Um, but the one that really was a coup de foudre really well, love at first sight was uh, Chateau de Bono, which we came uh, across kind of by hazard. Mm. Yeah, it was after a series of viewings of different properties that wasn't successful. And to be honest, at that stage of the process, we had uh, committed a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. in this dream. And, uh, and yeah, it was a bit hard to realize that we were quite unlikely to find the, the one, like the one we'd set ourselves to, to find. Like we had uh, obviously uh, ideas of what we dreamt of. Um, I, I remember Erin uh, talking about turrets and moats and um, I was going to politely explain her that that was probably way beyond a budget and uh, <laughs> it is, it's usually like, um, national uh, national chateau okay. level i was looking for also a beautiful part of france uh, green uh, beautiful countryside but not far from london through airports and uh, as we were discussing it we just came across borno and literally every single lineup it ticked every single box for us the mm -hmm. countryside is beautiful we are on the edge of a national forest not far from la rochelle where well, we can just fly easily back to London to see Aaron's family. And then, and then there was a chateau also. So mm -hmm. yeah, when Aaron saw it, I think uh, that was it. The, the deal was signed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, JV realized that um, he'd just signed up himself up for uh, 30 years of <laughs> <laughs> restoration time, yeah. and a lifetime of it. But, but with, with um, absolute joy as well, I think it yeah. was yeah. really, you know, a lot of hard work went in behind the scenes as well um, to find you know, the one that we felt we could you know, be those guardians for this generation to look after it for the next. And this one definitely held something really special for us. How many properties did you look at all, at Ballpark? How many did you look at all together? Gosh, I mean, probably about, I'd say a good hundred online and we visited oh maybe gosh. 20. 20, yeah, and it was a mix of knocking on doors sometimes mm -hmm. like when we add rumors in next village one is for sale let's see we <laughs> made, we made some great people this way mm. um just touring around france uh but bruno was a bit of an accident it had been online uh i'd been taken off because he was going through a sale and it was um a rumor a tip given off by the last estate agent in the last property we saw that was that mm. uh, told us that it was a rumor, but Bruno was coming back and sell. Um, so yeah. So I think it was a it lot was of really meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like to think. So. Yeah, yeah. The sign. And so tell one of the things that I always think is so interesting is, you know, the chateau is one thing, but there's so much history in the walls of, of, of a chateau. And so what's the story behind Chateau de Bourneau? Well, so um, there's been a chateau on this site for about 550 years. And the original Chateau de Borneau was actually a fortified chateau. And I have a special connection with this because it was actually a lady, Dame de Borneau, and her name was Jacquette de la Ramée, who actually asked the king at the time, who was Louis XI, um, to you know, have permission essentially to build a fortified um, chateau, which is quite unusual to have a, a kind of a power woman out there who was actually building the chateau. 
And so in 1464, we have this letter dated, but we think most of the work was completed really in 1466. And the, the sad thing is, is we, we have very little remaining of that original chateau and also very um, little information about what it might have looked like. But we do know that um, the moat that the current Chateau de Bourneau sits on is original. Um, the, the sort of external walls of the island that the chateau sits on is also from the original one. We still have four poivrières, like little turrets, and another big turret that's hidden behind the chateau you see today. And the vaulted cellars and the foundations are still part of the original complex, as well as one of our holiday cottages, which we think was the original boulangerie of the chateau. Mm. Um, so we have little hints of that previous one, but we're always on the lookout for, for more. And because we have access to the uh, cellars of the original chateau, we only have access to one chamber of that. And we think the original chateau was a U-shape and there's actually more chambers yet to be discovered that have been brought up at some point in its history, which is quite exciting. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to restore walls before breaking new ones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it will be at a later stage. A later stage. stage. <laughs> but there's still more to discover. And then the, the Chateau de Bourne you see today is actually um, new. Um, I say new. It was built in 1863 and the edifications mm -hmm. were completed between 1867 and um, 68. But um, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a little older because it's actually in the style of the French Premier Renaissance and um, the celebrated local architect was called Arsène Charrier and it was he who was heavily inspired by a lot of chateau from the Royal Loire Valley and so a lot of people come and see the chateau and say I feel I've seen this before but it's because we're, we're almost like a mini inspired version of Azé le Rideau um, and also Chateau d'Annette there's little little hints mm -hmm. hints there so we do have people that feel like they've had this deja vu <laughs> but um, they've never been here before and that's why the chateau is is unique to this region yeah. of Bonneau because it's like a Loire chateau that's been transported here so um, right. and who did you buy the chateau from who were the previous owners so the previous owners um, were the original family, and there's a bit of exciting Agatha Christie style history about this. Oh, <laughs> Big tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the original family that bought the chateau um, or built the chateau um, were aristocratic family from this region, and it stayed in the family until the 1950s. But very sadly, the heir apparent was killed in the First World War, so there was no one to inherit it. And by French law at the time, it was very common that your next of kin, so often the eldest nephew of a family, would inherit. And it was so common and so expected that before the will was opened, this family moved into the chateau and um, then they found a second will. And this is all sort of apocryphal, this is sort of stories that we've been told, um, so it's just part of the history that we've learned from the community. But at that point, the, the second will also um, said that the chateau was going to be left to um, this elderly lady's very devoted servant. And hence this- uh, So unsuit a 20 years lawsuit to determine whose was a correct uh, heir for the chateau. Um, so this story is very much still alive nowadays. We can still hear about it in the village. There's still signs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but the story, so the chateau was then transferred to the seven, the seven one. Uh, she lived probably a couple of years in the chateau, but rapidly sold the chateau to a military institute um, uh, of the wife. So again, another woman in the chateau story, uh, the wife of Maréchal de Latre de Tassini, who is on the same level as Charles de Gaulle in terms of French history and a local aristocratic family from this region. So this lady set up a military institute that welcomed um, people who fought for France uh, in our colonies or during different conflicts and uh, welcomed them in France to teach them French, the language, and also a skill that would help them to settle in French society. So we, we have this like lovely history of welcome here. And even now, because there's been many generations um, who have called Chateau de Bourneau their first home in France. So even now we still get 
their families and their children and grandchildren coming back to stay in our holiday cottages to say, oh, this was our first home and we have a really kind of lovely, happy feel about, about this, this place because of that, um, which is really wonderful. And we've learned quite a lot of yeah. things from them as well about how the chateau was used and what it was like at that time. Um, and so the, the institute continued till 1997, and at that point, um, all the soldiers had really been kind of repatriated into French society, and so mm -hmm. it didn't really have a function. And at that stage, it was put up for sale again, and the original family um, bought it back. And so it came back, back into the Desfontaine family, and they did some incredible work um, here because obviously as an institute it had to be sort of re-altered and made you know fit for purpose for them so um there was lots of maintenance that kind of needed to be kept and caught up on and a lot of um, renovation and and big jobs as well like the moat being in the cellar like <laughs> the, uh, stabilizing um a lot of the guard and they took that and then they looked after the chateau Bonneau for probably about 20, years, 20 odd yeah. years and then at that stage, they felt it was time to pass the baton on to the next generation, which is sort of how we came into the picture. And we, we bought it from them um, in 2018. So it's still very new for us. <laughs> right, very much so. And so when you bought the Chateau, and I know that we have you know, photos that we'll, we'll show here in just a minute, but in terms of the work that you expected would need to be undertaken at the Chateau and what you've worked on since then, how would you say the expectation and the reality has lined up in regards to the restoration work? Um, I think pretty well. Um, we had two scientists, so I guess um, we right. came prepared, like we uh, talked to people who had okay. done such crazy jump before in their <laughs> life. Um, so we also visited, before coming across Bruno, we visited property where the roof had came down and we realized, you know, some chateaux are, I think the chateau chooses the person, probably. We felt like undertaking such big project would be beyond our skills and our capacity. So um, this is how we ended up with Bruno. Bruno, I think it's quite interesting because the chateau that has kept um, the use for, uh, the, general, for the, the general good of the community. So yes, Bono has been changed upstairs in the chateau. Uh, the downstairs salon have been kept as they were originally, but all the upstairs have been modified by the military institute to create smaller rooms. Uh, so yes. A lot of walls have been knocked down, a lot mm. of features unfortunately have been lost, but we did lose a little bit of this originality, but the Institute also allow um, for the structure to be kept in a quite good shape. So we can't fully criticize this. Uh, they re roofed the chateau uh, in the 50s, so it's fairly recent, it's a big yeah. job, uh, as any chateau owner would tell you. Yeah. Um, they've maintained the property in some degree. Yes, they did change it, but I think kept it alive and modern. Um, the, um, our previous uh, owner, the previous owner of the Chateau de Bono, um, started something which for us is quite important is um, they transform all of the uh, outer houses into holiday cottages. I think the good thing for that is to um, our project and our view on how we can look after Bono is uh, to make sure Bono uh, can be financially independent in the future. So um, we feel like Bono a property like this one can should live on its own. Uh, so we just carry on the, the project that the previous owner started. Um, all of the upstairs for us needs to be redone. Um, the structure is in a good-ish condition. Um, when we arrived, there was probably like, I don't know, 20 or 30 leaks on the roof. They are fewer now. There's still uh, <laughs> probably five or six that we're trying to pin down. Well, that's uh, much better. It's, yes. it's a lot better. <laughs> we agree. Um, so that has been done. I think one of the two major problems was we had leaks from the roof and also our cellar is below the moat level and the water of the moat was coming in or at least not draining out anymore. So we spent the first year trying to uh, remove all the source of humidity from the chateau and we are now at the stage when the chateau is drying up a little bit and that's helping with everything else as you can imagine. So. The, the boiserie, the parquet, everything is looking much, much better. So, uh, 
So yeah. <laughs> petit à petit. Little exactly. by little. Exactly. 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 One step at a time. Exactly. 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 Why don't we show the slideshow, and I think that will help you uh, talk a little bit or help you show everybody the scope of this work that you're doing and the scope of the changes that you've been able to, to, to have there. So Ben, I think we're good to go now. Well, um, we um, have cleaned the whole facade. That was um, last lockdown COVID mm -hmm. job it was a, a hand clean of the, <laughs> with long ladders um, of the whole of the facade. So she's looking a lot cleaner. Um, the moat walls as well, there's lots of damage in there, which we've managed to fix some elements of it because this is from the medieval structure, but we still have um, more sides of this island that need stabilizing and fixing. So that's mm -hmm. on our sort of long list too. Um, don't know if you can see quite yet um, the state of our chimneys, but I'm sure we'll come on to that a bit later <laughs> on. Um, <laughs> think, yeah, a lot of it is um, the, the roof itself is in okay condition. Uh, I think a lot of our problems come from the junction between roof and other, like so tile and any other material is damaged at the moment. So we have a lot, a lot of problems with our zinc work. Mm -hmm. Most of the zinc work is quite worn out now. Um, the mortar between any um, stonework and the roof is also pretty damaged. So this is where we spend the first two years uh, cleaning and maintaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but by cleaning and maintaining the gutter, we also, I think some holes were naturally clogged up with debris. And by cleaning them, I guess we made some of the problem apparent. So we spent the first yeah, two years on the roof. Erina told me the roof was my limit. I was not supposed to go there, but um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. Uh, we, we've contacted local roofers um, and the beauty of Gono is we have a moat beautiful but uh, it also means that it's quite an accessible uh, two side of the chateau is fully inaccessible with usual uh, normal equipment which makes the cost of any work extremely high because you need to use scaffolding and manual uh, techniques so um, it's quite prohibitive for us at the moment to do that so we're relying on a um, on a, yeah, on a good rope and uh, and myself <laughs> walking the gut <laughs> <laughs> quite confident. Um, I hate, not as idea. you can imagine, but he, he is harness and he has a proper roofing equipment. I still, I still don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and this is slightly after you purchased, I presume, was this a photo that was taken to celebrate your purchase of the chateau or is this more recent? This is this is a little bit more recent. It's actually because we repainted the whole bridge. Um, it's an Eiffel um, design bridge, like Eiffel Tower. Um, yeah. And it was green and it was flaking. And so this was a big DIY project with um, a team of our friends. And um, we're very, very lucky that we've got incredibly generous friends and family who donate their time to, to come and help us with a lot of these big jobs. And so this this was a really big job. So we took the photo to <laughs> so we finally brought it back. And the reason we painted it white was because we actually found an old photograph from 1908. And in that, the, the bridge is painted white. So we, we very much believe that we should be trying to bring the chateau back to its former glory and to how the architect Arsene Charrier wanted to present this, this aesthetic. And so we really want to be very conscious to that history. And that's why we, any information we can find about the chateau and what it was like, we yeah. use to try and um, kind of inspire and direct our restoration work. And uh, this is also um, just to demonstrate that when we arrived, the uh, staircase was painted bright blue, um, including the woodwork. Um, so this was a huge job again, um, sanding and removing all of the uh, paint across the, the oak baluster and painting very fiddly <laughs> detail, all the ironwork. And again, this idea of trying to bring it back to what was more appropriate for the 19th century. And the tile work, which I'm not sure if you can see, but just in the sort of center of the hallway is an example of this era um, of building in this region, uh, Napoleon III. A lot of the uh, buildings and old, old buildings around here have these beautiful examples of 19th century tiles because there was a, a factory just about 10 minutes down the road from us. So we are really lucky that we have all kinds of examples of very unusual 19th century tiles that are still preserved. So. That's, that's really nice. Um, so we, we've been trying to seal them and look after them as well and protect them because obviously there's been a bit of wear and tear. Um, so 
that's our hallway. And um, yes, yeah, so this is a, what we call the solarium. So it's below the dome of the chateau. Um, I think what we uh, probably uh, forgot to say was um, at the moment we're doing everything ourselves, just the two of us. Um, and that goes from all the maintenance, renovation, gardening, cutting trees, looking after the, the Fujit. So um, our idea is just to bring people here to share this place, to help us along to um to look after the chateau um in a few years but for the moment everything we do is ourselves so when we arrived here um the solarium was um a bit more of a storage place uh, i don't know if it was really used or enjoyed um it felt a bit sorry it had line of flooring everywhere it was very damp a lot of the metal work was rotting away because some of the drain hole were not um cleaned cleared so uh, the metal just base just rusted away and got damaged so um so we carefully like cleaned it all um tried to get everything moving again and just simple maintenance really uh just to try to transform it and this will be part of the um, experience we're going to provide for some of our clients to come and enjoy the chateau so we have one bedroom that we have been working on and that would be the breakfast, um, the breakfast room, really, yeah. with this lovely view over the, the moat and the, our village church of Saint Jean de Baptiste. Which was built in something incredible, wasn't it? Built in 1059, our church. Mm. So we've turned it into a sort of winter garden. Um, we were hoping, really hoping, that the 19th century tiles would be underneath these mm. three layers of lino and concrete, but sadly we found 1960s tiles. <laughs> <laughs> but um, better than the, the lino. Um, so, so now we have jasmine climbing up the walls in here, which you can't see um, in the picture, but um, it definitely feels a little bit more loved and the doors and the windows are all fixed again. And it's now somewhere where people can sort of sit and kind of enjoy the, the view. And uh, yes, as you said, looking out towards the, the church. So it's, it's a nice spot. Lovely. Um, so this is, sort of an example of um, what a lot of the rooms are like. Um, well, actually, this is probably better. So the previous owners, um, because you wouldn't probably not believe it, but we're actually in a seismic zone, zone three. So we do get some tremors very rarely, but enough that there was a lot of structural problems with our turrets. The turrets on the west wing um, were in sort of doing this. And so the owners put, uh, the previous owners put this basically structural mm, yeah. like, T-bot in to, to, to stabilize them. And so they had to raise the floor um, and that's why they, they started doing this room. So this is how we inherited it. Um, and then we've worked quite hard to do this, this room up. So um, we put in all the boiserie back to themselves. So excuse my crazy hair and mad glasses. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that, that's restoration. I mean, that's work though, right? That's the yeah, reality. Exactly. <laughs> So we, we added back all the boiserie. We, we wanted um, to sort of return all those period features that have been sadly removed by the Institute. So we put that all back. Um, we've sanded the floors down in here and this is us. So we've already just sanded down the parquet floor and we're restaining them. Um, <laughs> one of our nighttime activities is a lot of <laughs> and kind of bringing, bringing it back to life and all of the features we find for the bedrooms um we've either found in the chateau and they've been abandoned that we're trying to part of our i guess our message is um we very much want to salvage and save things rather than buying new and things ending up in mm. um landfill so a lot of our fixtures and features in all of our rooms are um antiques or um you know vintage of some description that we've Kind of upcycled or rescued um which is very much i guess part of our ethos and um ideas i, I suppose yeah. for the chateau to live again to have a little bit of soul in what's in the rooms too i think that what we find as well coming back to france um i mean i'm french but i obviously live like 10 years in uk and right. um what we all love about france it's um the old properties and the furnitures and you know everything that old French really but at the moment it's not really something that um, 
seems to interest uh, the French in general. So a lot of uh, old properties are not something that the French would buy or get into, and specifically chateau, like chateau is a big no-no for the French. But the same applies for the furnitures. And so we actually um, try to find a pair of appropriate furnitures, but it's quite important, I think, for us to do it now because a lot of them are getting um, scrapped simply, simply like that. So we are rescuing as antiques, like genuine antiques at the moment we find. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's perfect, but this is part of our project also is to wear awareness to um, this type of property, um, all property, all patrimoine is important and mm -hmm. it can be beautiful and it can be something we can do, you know, we can do lovely things with it. And the same applies for the furniture and all the pictures of the chateau. So yeah, so that's a so, perfect so yes. example. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, so room after a um, little work. So there's a few little features to point out. Um, so the bed is a, a, you know, a French antique, which again, nobody wanted. So mm -hmm. um, part of my pleasure is either reupholstering things or you know, cleaning and fixing them, um, upcycling them and giving them a new life. And uh, the ciel de lis, so the uh, bed canopy, is actually um, a little table which I've inverted to create this <laughs> look. Um, and I've um, found some really like great quality curtains, which again nobody wanted because they're very very long and they probably don't fit a modern house, but perfect for us. Um, uh, the the bedside tables we found abandoned in the chateau attic. Um, there's also a a dressing table that we found abandoned here and um, the bath that you can just see through there was actually in someone's garden which is a, an old vintage antique which in the UK we would just be dying over but here nobody wants and so yeah. um, we bought that and I re-enameled it and that's become our kind of feature in that bathroom everyone wants to have a bath and look out <laughs> over the moat and say wow where did you find this bath and <laughs> I, I feel really delighted to tell them that it actually <laughs> lived in someone's garden probably for about 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> see the look at some people face when we are buying furnitures. And like, they're, really? They're really like, are you sure? Like, seriously, are you just happy for me? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's part of our method. I think it's important to be sustainable. You know, these old properties, um, it's about looking after them, but it's also looking after all the little elements of the chateau that give it soul and story. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we love collecting pieces like that, that um, kind of have a little bit more meaning than just right. you know, buying from the modern shop. <laughs> uh, and this is the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, so yeah, the bathroom was very much, uh, let's say 60s. It might not have been 60s, maybe earlier than that, but it was very not to us uh, chateau appropriate. It was quite modern, uh, but it was also mainly leaking. So um, leaking and damaging the, the beams and the structure and the kitchen underneath. So it was one of the first jobs where, um, again, we, we did everything ourselves. So uh, from taking up the tiles, um, re redoing everything from uh, start to finish. So it was a big job. A mm, lot of yeah. uh, cursing and learning was done. <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine uh, uh, yeah. but no it's important it's also um help us um putting together the, the the vision we have for the chateau and what we are hoping to achieve on the grander scale all over the, the rest of the chateau so one yeah. room down <laughs> <laughs> 55 to go and there we go the final yes you can see the bath a little bit more closely now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, I hope that you're able to enjoy it because, my goodness, where it started and where it is is <laughs> really <dark to> <laughs> one day. One day I'll have a have a treat and then sit with a good right. <laughs> But um, uh, it's on the on the on the list of uh, things when we have time. Right. Yeah. But yeah, everything here is a, is a mix between things we fixed. So the bass was something we found in someone's garden. Mm -hmm. um, the sink base is an old French vaisselier and. They are basically given away nowadays. People it's ridiculous. It's, it's like, I think that people would pay you to take them away. So um, <laughs> we remove the top part, which is where you would um, display your, your plate, and uh, we install uh, two old fashioned things in it. 
Um, the mirror is a recreation, but all the sconces have been bought in different brocante and uh, shy shop around. Uh, the chair is the same, both from brocante and the same for the carpet. So yeah, it's bits of everything. <laughs> So um, we're lucky to have two turrets, um, which were originally chapels. Um, and this is just to show you a little bit about the kind of level of work we still have to do. So these are originally 19th century. And if you look closely to the window on the left, you'll see that there's holes where the glass has been broken. So this is the kind of work, although we like doing a lot of DIY, we're also very much aware of our limitations and the importance of getting the right artisanal help. And for this, it's really important that um, we get it done properly. So this is something that's on our list for when, when we are able to procure a bit more business and have more income, then this is something that we want professionals to do. Um, and you can also see at the bottom of this window, um, all the wood is rotting. And so there's ingress of water coming into the chapel as well. So when it's really stormy, <laughs> This is one of my duties, is going into these chapels and making sure that the water is not coming in and damaging the floor. Mm. So if we get any um, kind of warning that this, this is gonna happen, then I kind of go in there and you know, tuck um, some toweling and, and things into the window frame itself. And it's hope the, yeah, the scale of the project is, I think it can be yeah. quite overwhelming. We, uh, we need to, we're trying to focus from the top down and trickle down the task. So uh, at the moment, uh, the main concern for us is anything above our roof. So the chimneys and all the link work that's sort of mobile when it shouldn't be mobile. Um, and then there's a the roof and then there's different rooms. But yeah, the, these windows in particular, so uh, the, the fact that they are glass stained is beautiful and quite rare, but all the, um, the I think it's lead, the lead metal, yeah. the mm. actually crater structure is damaging. So. We are trying just to slightly reinforce them just to make sure they last a little right. bit more until we can get them restored. The, 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 the window itself is a curved window, so it needs to be done properly by, you know, yeah. someone who knows how to yes. remake those because it's very easy to replace place it, and I think, by, by a, a flat straight window. And this is what most people have told us to do, just go for, like, a flat yeah. version. But... We are trying to restore and we are not trying to, you know, there's, yeah. there's that balance you know, trying exactly. to, it, but also, you know, we're very much aware that we are the guardians trying to protect history, not mm. put yeah. too much of a modern stamp on things. And so, you know, getting the right people for the right job is, is also important. Yeah. And this is our other chapel. Um, so this is in a similar state, actually, um, not over broken panes but um it, there are loose panes as well and um they're, they're different as well so the mf is actually um from the original family muller and fontaine so we have a lot of this insignia around the, the house which we're lucky still survives which is really really nice so even more so i think it's important that we protect these these windows yeah um this is our kitchen so it, you've seen a lot of the horrible side and this is just to sort of show you that <laughs> <laughs> we are to make it look lovely. Yeah. Um, we found an old 1950s um, photograph of what this room used to be like, and there was copper everywhere. So um, I'm always on the lookout for copper pans and brocantes to try and give it that nod to the history before. Um, so the, the ceiling was also sadly lowered um, at some point in the chateau's history. So we would really love to put back the original plasterwork, which for a 19th century kitchen was probably not anything ornate, but just mm. at least mm -hmm. having that um, kind of milieu around it would be really nice. And this fireplace is actually older than the chateau. And we're not entirely sure where it comes from. It's been reclaimed from someone else's chateau. Um, and it's certainly not 19th century at all, but it's this huge, wonderful hearth. So um, we're very lucky to have it, but in a way it's, it's probably been nicked from somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> We, we feel it's, so it's not, we did not move it, but we feel it's almost fair because uh, we find that, so we don't have any trace of the original medieval Chateau of Bruno, but having been around some of our neighbor's house in the village, we do realize that some of those very regular house have very grand, you know, doorways or fireplaces and it tends to be quite suspicious. And uh, I know that, <laughs> 
after the revolution, it was very common for ruined statues to be used as open quarries. And uh, we have a few friends who are restoring ruins, like ruins where all the stone works have been stolen to build the farm next door. So, yeah, we're pretty sure our fireplaces were done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this room used to actually be a library. Um, so the original library of Chateau de Bruneau um, still has all the beautiful panelling. And uh, the previous owner says she remembers when she was three years old seeing all the bookcases around. So mm -hmm. at the moment, it's a dining room. And the, this is the original dining table, which can seat 22 people. And we are really lucky to still have it. Um, we think it was made in this room, but it, we do know that it used to be more of a, of a library. So one day I would oh, just love to do that again, to put back the books. So for now, we just leave a few books in here as a little, again, nod to its previous use. So um, that the cupboard at the back used to be filled with glassware and I've now put in vintage and antique books and there's, there's books everywhere. So it's just a little reminder of what it was until one day we can bring it back to its uh, original life. And uh, this is the yellow salon, which is where we are at the moment. And um, believe it or not, there was layers of concrete and lino on top of this beautiful um, baton rompu parquet floor, um, which I wish I could say we took credit for removing it, but it wasn't us actually, it's the previous <laughs> owners um, removed all this concrete and in a way it had protected the, the wooden floor. So it was actually still there in a reasonable state underneath. So we cleared the room out and by hand, um, we nourished the parquet, fixed the loose bits, replaced um, ones that needed replacing. So that was quite a big job because it's 70 square meters, but um, oh, we're so thrilled. It <laughs> it's, honestly would have been so sad if, if underneath that concrete, that beautiful floor had, had been totally destroyed. So I think we're, yeah. we're really lucky that um, that is still there. It's beautiful. And uh, this is a red salon. So this is in the West Wing. And we're really lucky because the previous owners incredibly kindly left all of the original portraits um, to us in our keeping and our care. And the idea is that um, if we were ever to move from Chateau de Bourneau, that the portraits always stay. And we think that's incredibly lovely and really important too, because they were painted for this room. And the family were absolutely in their rights to remove them. That they are their ancestors, but they've kept them there and they've hung there for the last 160 years. So we haven't moved them and um, they will still be there and they just need a bit of restoration, a little bit of a clean, but for now, um, we're very pleased that they're there. Um, it's a, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. So it was yeah. a really, really lovely gesture. Um, yeah. And the floor, so you can just see a hint of that floor is um, a Versailles parquet and it's quite unusual for this region because there's ebony inlaid in the oak. Um, but unfortunately it's really, really severely damaged from years of rising damp um, insects who have eaten the tongue and groove because these were floors that were very much structural. There's, mm. there's about four main beams and then the floor is jigsawed together and it's each individual tiny section of this jigsaw floor is structural with a, a drop into the medieval vault. And unfortunately the, the groove, the sort of tongue and groove um, with that keeps it together has been eaten um, and destroyed by humidity. And so this floor is unfortunately um, in a really bad shape. So we can't really let anyone come in because we don't want them to fall into our medieval cellar. <laughs> so we kind of know the bad areas. <laughs> but, um, that's also on our kind of big project to do. This is um, uh, Monsieur Moller, Edmund Moller, who built the Chateau de Bourneau. Um, he still hangs in the Red Salon. Um, so he's the M that you see all over the, the building. Yeah. He was a real bon vivant. And there's little dogs and um, vines carved into the facade because he obviously liked um, a good beverage. And um, <laughs> a, around nice. here, yeah. hunting um, back in the 19th century, this was, I guess, in a way, part of his hunting lodge. So yeah, that's Edmund Moller. And uh, his wife, Claire de Fontaine, who's from the original aristocratic family here. Um, we have a picture of her actually when she, in her 80s, at her granddaughter's wedding in 1908, um, mm. which is a really lovely one. And it was funny because I see her every day, obviously, in our salon. And then I, somebody <laughs> sent me this photograph and I looked at her and I was like, gosh, that's Claire. I could <laughs> recognize her immediately. And so I said, oh, yes, Madame de Fontaine, she lived to a great age. <laughs> And yes, just to show you the, the parquet situation and the, the rather 
frightening drop. Um, so the bits that we've lost, but don't worry, we have saved those pieces so that one day when we do have the funds, we'll be able to restore the, the full yeah. floor. When we came to visit uh, Bono for the first time, we did notice that some furniture were in odd places in this room and we just could not understand why, but I guess the you know, previous owner were moving, so we did not question it too much, but um, we didn't understand why. Um, we do the same some now. Some of the parkies, wait, that old. So yeah, my nieces and nephews saw this room, the Indiana Jones Park room. So it's 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 a yeah. serious problem. So um it is something that we is on our big kind mm. of wish list to, to right. yeah. it's, the um I think to restore that we'll need to find the right person who can do that. This is a very, very specialist skill. Yeah. Um just trying to repair more than replace uh, the wood yeah. is gonna be a uh, a bit of a challenge uh, so we need to find the right person and it's going to be an enormous job uh, yeah. so it's a bit of like a trust with the person and to make sure it's done properly and yeah. and i suppose this is just an example of what most of the upstairs rooms are like at the moment um so you can see most of the 19th centuries other than the shutters um some of the doorways are have been removed all the cornicing um all the fireplaces so all of the kind of beautiful aspects um have sadly been removed by the institute but our mission is we do want to replace them we want to salvage um what we can and also you know find original items that we can bring back um there's also a lot of slightly strange plumbing system that happened probably in the 1950s and 60s so you can see there's this very um, <laughs> not the most attractive type of work that's running kind of at random down walls and things. So all of this needs to be replumbed, um, the electrics redone, um, yeah, the, you know, bringing back that kind of beauty and that kind of, um, you know, the, the original glory of um, Chateau yeah. de Bonneau is, is sort of on our, on our uh, list. And again, this is another room, um, this room in a way I find quite romantic, which probably no one else will see, but, <laughs> um, because actually each generation has put their own wallpaper on top of the next. So we've got like eight different examples. So, I mean, the, the 1970s kind of strange zigzaggy thing maybe is not that great, but actually we have some really lovely hand painted 19th century um, walls. And then after that, there's um, quite a nice sort of floral um, sort of example. And after that, another one. So in a way it just kind of shows I guess hints of the history and how it's evolved the chateau over time with different uses. So the Museum of Modern Interior of French Modern. <laughs> 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 Again, still, still cool. And then this is actually the top attic floor. So as I said, you know, before it was used as a military institute. So this unfortunately has not been lived in for about 40 years, and this is the state that it's still in um, mm. across both of our floors. So we've got about a thousand square meters here and um, most of it is, is like this for now, um, but the West Wing first floor, um, we've managed to improve. We've ripped up the um, kind of three layers of lino because one was apparently not enough. And we've luckily found that there's some original parquet flooring that still exists under there. So we always live in hope that actually when we remove a lot of this sort of 1970s elements that there may well still be things hidden we are yet to right. discover. And again, another of our corridors right at the top. So this is on um, top of the south wing, which again, hasn't been touched. So a lot of um, textured wallpaper and yeah, lino waiting to reveal what's underneath. <laughs> and this is just to give you an idea of the level of damp problems that we have mm -hmm. in um, the top. So this is actually in our, the room adjacent to the main dome where there's been water ingress for years and years. So that is a mold, it's not, supposedly dangerous we've had it checked but um mm. it, it is is nasty it's eating the the stonework and a lot of the wooden woodwork as well so this leak we've actually managed to fix so um we're seeing it drying out so this is really um a great sign and there's a lot of this damage around most of the roofing which is now getting better so it's, yeah it was a quite a complex one so it was leaking when we were at the Intricus yeah good year to find the source of the leak we had uh, professional guys to come and have a look and um, they, it, it's not it wasn't an obvious leak because it's at the junction so the chateau is creating an L shape mm. and you've got the dome in the middle um, just at the angle and uh, the leak was actually starting 
almost on the other side of the dome and just you know the water was running along the beam that was running along another beam and mm -hmm. cool here so um we've got yeah, it gonna... clear now and this is when we can start moving forward uh with the process but yeah it's um Every, pro every problem in the chateau is a bit like that. You know, it's never a simple solution. It's always, you need to unpeel years of um, maintenance or rework of, 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 and yeah. But it's fascinating. And it's just giving you an example of the kind of scale of the project, because this is one, just one of our four outhouses. This is actually an 18th century building, which used to be um, the boulangerie of the sh original chateau. So this is probably our oldest, building other than the secret turret hidden behind the chateau. Um, so this sleeps 10 people and we used our holiday cottages um, exclusively, all income from that goes directly into our restoration. So um, this is La Forêt. So that is, well, our kind of smallest, well, yeah. second smallest one. Um, we also have the one next door to it used to be um, a grange, um, which has been also done up um, so this one is La Villa, which sleeps 12. Um, so again, <laughs> a lot of maintenance associated kind of yeah. with this. And it used to be a language school at one stage when this was a military institute. Um, I kind of love the stories behind these places. And Le Manoir, this um, is the same age as the chateau. It used to be the old coach house. Um, and this is also another holiday cottage for 12. So again, it's still got an old roof. It's still got gutters that need clearing. It's still got a garden. We've got the old yeah. well. Um, so, um, it, yeah, it, it takes a lot of work and all the shutters need repainting. And <laughs> so um, keeps us busy. <laughs> and then Le Park. So this is our smallest one. It sleeps eight. And then this, this same it used to be um, sort of agricultural buildings as well, and it's now being converted. Um, and you know, we, we often get slip tiles on the roof that needs to be maintained as well. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> full time, full time uh, work for the two of us here. And this is our ruined orangery, and there was a devastating fire about thirty years ago. Um, this is where. The, it used to be the hot house of the chateau, and so they used to grow oranges and exotic fruit and flowers. And then it sadly um, burnt down. Well, the roof was lost, and the big, um, they were sort of Georgian style windows were also um, burnt. And so it's sort of a ruined shell. And it would just be a dream for us to mm. actually restore those windows again, get bespoke windows remade, and replace mm. the roof. So at the moment, we use this as a, um, a kind of rustic wedding venue. Um, and actually, although it looks <laughs> really <laughs> kind of strange and a bit sad, but actually with candles and things, it has that kind of romantic feel. And a lot of people, you know, love that sort of alfresco dining thing. So we still use it, but um, oh, I would just love to, to put the windows back one day. So that's on our kind of grand list of uh, dreams for um, looking after this place. <sighs> And our chimneys um, yeah. sort of is in a good state-ish, mostly. mostly with it. But um, our chimneys, unfortunately, are in um, a pretty devastating um, state, which we did know about when we bought the place. So we did didn't go in blindly. Mm. Um, we knew always knew that we would have a lot of money to put into this, and so we've been kind of gearing up to fix them this spring. But obviously, COVID, like a lot of little businesses, has had a massive impact in, on our um, kind of financial um, position. And so we just don't have the capital to do it this spring at the moment, um, which is sort of why um, kind of our social media has been something which has been incredibly surprisingly helpful to us in a way that we never imagined at all. Um, my kind of little account started as really just a way of spreading our message about looking after heritage and how it's really important to save these buildings and you know we can do it lots of other people can do it too you don't have to have inherited them you can you know from a tiny little cottage or a farmhouse it's still really important and part of our kind of cultural um kind of heritage in in europe and so we sort of started documenting this progress and we're absolutely surprised and flattered and incredibly heartened to to find a lot of people who are also interested in, in old buildings and maybe inspired as well and um, so uh, that's our kind of crowdfunding idea for our chimneys is sort of a recent idea purely because so many people who followed us kindly 
asked us, you know, how, how can we help support the Chateau and how can we be a part of the Chateau story and give you a hand, particularly in this sort of COVID context, which has been really wonderful. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're, we're currently raising money to fix all five of them, which are um, in pretty dire straits. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive undertaking. <laughs> It is. It's um, as Erin said. We knew they were in bad condition. When right. one of the first thing we did when we arrived um, was to get an expert on the roof to tell us what the situation actually was, mm -hmm. to create a plan of um, what we should do in what order, and mm -hmm. to manage the. You know, our our project is to bring this property back to life, giving the purpose. So this is what the previous owner has done with transforming uh, the outer houses in Jeet. Mm -hmm. We want to do the same with the Chateau and the Orangery uh, in order for us to look after this property. And um, yeah, the, we had a plan and we knew that this was the next emergency. Every winter we are terrified mm -hmm. now when there's like high wind and water that just keep eroding the mortar a little bit more, a little bit more. And, this chimney is probably the worst because the, the crack you see is through, throughout. So there's not much holding the right part of the chimney at the moment. Um, and what's under the chimney is our roof. And so, yeah, so it's, uh, we need to start from there. And it's true that this year, the I mean, COVID uh, is devastating on many respects, but yeah. our mini project, our scales, um, what's so devastating is that we had to, we knew that we would have to push back this essential work for us by a few years. It's, we were talking years straight away. So it was a bit devastating for us to, um, yeah, to endure this crisis. Yeah, I think we want to bring everybody on screen. That was such an interesting look.